series about heaven. Uh, so uh, as I talked at the very beginning, uh, I said, hey, I want to cover a few topics, but you guys know me, when I cover a topic on Sunday morning, it's not going to be exhaustive. So I'm hoping that my prayer has been that as we kind of, as I prompt some some conversations on Sunday morning, as you've taken time to get in the Bible, to Google a few things, maybe find some articles and, and dive into this. And I want to encourage you again that, hey, if at any time that you have, you have a question, you have, hey, Andrew, what about this thing? What about this thought? I was taught this way. Um, maybe I was never taught any of this. Uh, and you say, hey, I want to dive a little deeper. Uh, message us. I, I have now more free time uh, to meet with coffee, and I may have another announcement sometime soon about maybe even more free time. What's up? What if you're too young to drink coffee? If you're too young to drink coffee, then do you like bubble tea? Have you tried bubble tea? <laughs> well, uh, I've never tried bubble tea. I probably pass on that. You'll pass on that. Right. We'll find something where we can go get a, get a, get a drink together and uh, have a good time. Dive in the word. Um, if you are not already involved in a DNA group, I want to encourage that. I know since we launched them, I haven't really mentioned them again on a Sunday morning, but I've been encouraged. Kirk and I used to meet on Friday mornings. I've have, I have heard of other people meeting across town, but those groups are to enable some discovery time, some time to get in the word together, to pray for one another, and to pray for your unbelieving friends. So continue to meet. But today we're gonna we're gonna go through a little bit more about heaven, a reality for me when I was young. Um, you guys know that Pastor Bob and Tina are my parents. I, I'm kind of super blessed, and the more I the older I get, the more the more times I say, man, I'm I'm blessed. I had a really awesome childhood. But it was like Saturday Saturdays for us were um, were what it was chore day. So Saturday morning. I uh, often got woke up by a vacuum cleaner. I don't know how I got, got woken up by a vacuum cleaner, but I was often how I got woken up, and that's uh, was a sign to then get the rest of the chores done. But after we got our chores done, most Saturdays were spent going around neighborhoods, knocking on doors, and helping kids uh, know more about Jesus. And that was like that was like my lifestyle. That was like every Saturday. I didn't worry about. I mean, I, I was playing soccer too, so we played soccer. But I mean, Saturdays was a day that we went and helped other people know about Jesus. And when I've been talking about heaven in this whole series, um, man, I couldn't wait to get to today's sermon. Because if we talk about heaven, the reality of heaven for us is really awesome, right? We can just celebrate, we're like, there's a hope that we have, there's a future, man, I could take the biggest risk in all the world because I know that, that my future is held in God's hand and I'm secure, right? So for us that, that know Jesus and have put our faith in Him, man, it's, it's like something to celebrate about, it's something to look forward to. And, it, and as much of a celebration that there is about heaven, man, is also a point of huge motivation for us as believers. Because it's a reality that in the future we can just spend eternity with, with God in heaven and all the awesome things that we've been talking about in this series, then there's also the reality that there's going to be people that are going to spend eternity away from God. And every time that I read scripture, and every time from when I was the youngest age, walking on the streets, knocking on apartment doors, I mean, I couldn't imagine my friend, my friend, uh, when I was a kid, his name was Alex. We used to do all sorts of fun things in Southern California, you know, catching scorpions and, and lizards and all sorts of fun things, right, Mom? Yeah. Uh, but the reality that if I wasn't able to share this gift of Jesus with Alex was so prepped on me, man, when we would do sleepovers, I would try to, I would try to bring gospel tracks with me. That was what I thought. But, you know, we, we used to, um, there's a gentleman, Ray Comfort, and uh, he would come to our church in Southern California a lot, and uh, he would have his little, like, even magic tricks he could do to, like, share the gospel, you know? So I would, I would go to sleepovers, I'd be ready, you know, practicing, getting ready to share Jesus, because I knew that, man, if this is the reality that, that Jesus has saved my life, and that in him, there, by the penalty of my sins have been done away with, then if Alex didn't know Jesus, then his eternity would be set, separated from God. And to me, that was a really harsh reality. So we can talk and celebrate the fact 
that in this series we said Jesus is returning soon. I mean, that's a reality. That's a fact. Jesus is returning soon. So what does that mean for me? You know, we can look for all the signs. You know, it's, it's kind of neat. We can look for the earthquakes and the famines and the, and the wars and all that kind of stuff. But I said, man, for, and I said in that message that for generations, people have been looking around and saying, things are bad. And so how do we, how do we take that scripture? How, do we, how, do, how does that scripture um, implement and, and live out our life today? It, it means that, man, in every generation, in every time, things have been going bad and things are going worse. Be ready, because at any moment, Jesus can return. Right? We talked about, man, after Jesus return, there's going to be a coming judgment. In Matthew 25, he said that, that Jesus is going to be our judge, that he lived the perfect life. And, man, if I measure myself up against Christ, I know that I fail. So in that, I celebrate that Jesus has covered me, right? I, my righteousness is, is not my own. It, it's the righteousness from Christ. And so, man, I get to celebrate that even when I stand before judgment, man, I have somebody on my side that's going to speak a better word for me because I know in my life, even on my best days, doesn't compare at all to who Christ is. We're talking about our heavenly body, that we can keep on going. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 said, man, I've been abandoned, I've been struck down, I've been destroyed, man, I, I've been left for dead, I, I, I've, I've been in prison. All, uh, all this has, um, in chapter 5, it says, that it caused decay in my body. My body's decaying. And I said, man, sometimes in, in this room, you know, I'm, I'm a little younger than some of the uh, ages in the, in the room. And, and I said, you know, maybe I can't really complain about my body decaying as much as other people in the room. But for all of us, it's a reality, right, that in this world we have, there's things that come against us. There's troubles that we may have. There's circumstances that come against us. There's even physical elements, as we prayed for this morning, that are on our body. And our body is decaying. And Paul said, what is my hope? How can I keep on going? My hope is that one day I'm going to be with Christ and this tent is going to pass away and I'm going to get in the tent. So they said, you can keep on going. And we encourage one another, keep on going. There's a hope that we have. We talked last week about a new heaven and a new earth coming. And man, what a, what a crazy imagination. I, I mean, I confess, I'm a Barney kid, right? So I mean, like, I have a huge imagination, right? But to imagine a world that will be totally different than what it is right now, where, where there will be no more pain, no more suffering. I mean, like, totally upside down from what we're experiencing right now, ushered in by Jesus' return, and all things made and renewed, right? Not just destroyed. We talked about that, we talked about that in uh, Scripture. Uh, everything is going to be destroyed, but not in destruction as if nothing's going to come back. That no, it's going to be renewed, everything transformed to exactly the way God decided to be. So today we're going to again look at 2 Corinthians. We're going to turn in chapter... Four and five a little bit. And we're going to talk about this reality that if all these amazing things are for us, man, there's work to be done. There's work to be done. Second Corinthians, we're, we're looking in chapter four and verse uh, sorry, chapter four and chapter five this morning. Paul, right? Chapter four. Let's let me open this. I'm gonna Paul in chapter 4 opens up. Send through God's mercy, we have this ministry. We don't lose heart. We don't lose heart. He goes on to say, man, I've been shipwrecked. I've been destroyed. I've been abandoned. I've been struck down. But we know that this is just a, a temporary thing. Eternity of life with Christ is for those who have put their faith in Him. So how can we keep on going? Paul, Paul here, we described a couple weeks ago, Paul's this amazing missionary church planner going out all for nothing, you know, all in. I'm going to go after Jesus and help other people know him. Man, for us that we, we've watched, listened to this whole series, man, it, it does nothing short of create, I say, like, hallelujah moments in me. This man, yes, I'm going to get it. Like, I, I wasn't going to say that this week. Man, this week, I, I, I preached that message last week, um, and it was hard for me 
Because as I'm talking to you guys all about this amazing thing that, hey, we're going to have hope in heaven, we're going to get a new body that, uh, you know, it's going to be amazing for us, keep on going, you know, just like Paul did, he was reckless, he abandoned, he didn't care, and all I could hear last week was God say, well, what about you? Yeah. Amen. And so I, um, on Tuesday, I put in my three-week notice and told Curry in the box that I will no longer be the manager there. And I, and I did this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I was thinking about, okay, I, I tallied up all of my finances and said, okay, it will be, it'll be tough, but it won't be too tough. Like, uh, you know, uh, we were missionaries, Rachel and I were missionaries for some years, and uh, we lived on less. You know, now we have a kid, so maybe there's a little bit more addition to the equations and everything. But I said, okay, it, it can measure up, it'll be tight, but it won't be too tight. But the second biggest thing that kept on echoing inside of me as I'm thinking about Paul and thinking about heaven and thinking, and Paul went all out, right? Like, he was a baller for Jesus. Like, he didn't care what was going to happen. He didn't care where his next meal was coming from. He didn't, he didn't care if they were going to beat him up, if they were going to throw him in prison, if he was going to be left for dead. He just went for it. And I, and, and I couldn't, like, shake that inside of me. And so I said, Man, I'm just, I'm done with curry in the box. So I wanted to let you guys know, as a church, uh, August 31st will be my last day at curry in the box. That way, we can focus, I, that Rachel and I, and in that, our purpose in moving to Madison three years ago were to help revitalize and, and reset uh, Cap City Church and make, uh, continue to make this a church that impacts the nations for Christ. And so for the last two years, out of necessity, you know, I took that position, but now God said, I guess God is calling me to another step of faith. I, I, you guys know I cut my hours early this summer and said, you know what, just, uh, you can't concentrate on two things at once. So I'm here to tell you guys, I'm, I'm all in on August, I mean, I've been all in all uh, last two years, but I'm all in August 31st <laughs> uh, to concentrate on what God wants to do here at Capital City Church. And that was just a side note a little bit from what we're talking about today. But, I mean, this is the reality. I'm not telling you guys all to quit your jobs. <laughs> but this is the reality when we get a picture of heaven and we truly believe it. I started this series saying that the goal for this series, we're talking about heaven, right? So one of it is going to be informative. You guys are going to maybe learn something new. That's going to be great. But it was to challenge you to live for the glory of God no matter what. And so something, there's something about when we talk about heaven, when we talk about all the things to come, when we talk about the security that we have because we put our faith in Jesus that allows us to live unabandoned for Him. Now I want to take that crazy example. I'm quitting my job or resigning the job so that I can focus full time on here. I don't know if God's going to call you to quit your job. I, I, I know that that put all of our finances at the church at zero. So I, I hope that doesn't happen, or maybe that's just a step of faith God is taking. But I'm, I'm, I am, I do believe that as we talk about heaven, it's going to challenge us to live with abandonment. It's going to challenge us to live all for God's glory. And when we look at this topic again today, I think it again challenged us, man, I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if all the numbers don't add up correctly. I don't care what my reputation is. Man, I, my future is secure, and there's people around me that need that same security. How then should I live? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that we answer that question will change as the, as the truth of God's word again permeates our heart and we know what we have in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, it says this. Since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. Right? Since we know what it is, since we know what we have, since we know what it is to fear the Lord, then this. Then we try to persuade others. That's the message today. If we know what we have, we know the security, we know what we have in Christ Jesus, we know eternal life, we know the hope, we know the new heaven that's coming, we know this, we try to persuade others. 
If all the scripture in heaven is, tr and true, is true and we can celebrate that, then the opposite must also be true, that those that find themselves apart from God, those that find themselves not underneath the covering of Christ's righteousness, those that have not put their faith in Christ will find themselves <laughs> in hell for eternity. It's a sober reality. This week, I got an opportunity, an amazing opportunity, to sit in a, in a stadium full of 70,000 people and, and cheer on the Packers. It was amazing, you know, one of those life moments, one of those experience moments, like, man, I, this is amazing, it's so much better than watching it on TV. But even in that moment, I'm thinking about God, yeah. there's 70,000 people surrounding me at this moment, and what am I doing? And I, I don't want to ruin all of our enjoyment, I love the Packers, mm -hmm. keep on cheering for the Packers. <laughs> well, what am I doing for the person sitting next to me? And how can I impact the gas tendon when I go inside and I pay for cash instead of swiping it, just like so can have that interaction with them, right? Well, what do I do? Man, it's really exciting now. I'm telling people at work that I'm leaving. So all of these customers that I've had for two years, now I'm opening up. I talk about Jesus all I want. I'm like, but I'm like I can't lose my job now, right? Go home. <laughs> just go all out, right? And the contrast is great between what we receive in heaven, submitted to Jesus, and, 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 right? The difference between life and, and death. I mean, a place where there's no tears, no pain, no sorrow, that Jesus himself says, well, he wipes the tears away from our eyes, right? And to a place that is weeping, full of sorrow. Uh, a place that's free from pain. I mean, when some of us in the room, we're celebrating. We're like, yeah, we can't wait for that. Like, no pain to a place, the gnashing of teeth, they, and, and torment. In verse 12 it says this, We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but we are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. Paul, other places will say, you're taking up, you, you have courage in what is seen, uh, what is unseen instead of what is seen. Uh, verse 13, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it's for God. Amen. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. Hallelujah. Verse 15, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Christ's love compels us, Paul said. What motivates Paul? What, what, what is, he has a hope in the thing. But Christ's love, it compels him. He's like, I can't stop. Whether you think I'm out of the mind and I'm crazy, or when I'm speaking directly to you in such a way that, that I'm hoping that you understand and you get this truth, either side of it is all because Christ's love so compels me, I can't stop but go and share this great and awesome news that there is one man and he died for you, and through that one man you receive righteousness. A multitude of sins were forgiven because that one man out of our minds. This is the hardest thing for me. Yeah. Because sometimes I really do, as much as I fear God and understand His holiness and, and look and hope for the future, man, sometimes I'm, I'm crazy intimidated just to say hello to somebody. Hey, would you like to come to Capital City Church with me? Like, right? Like, even that step of faith sometimes, I'm so worried about what they're going to think about me. Man, what would it look like if us as a church were to get this and say, man, it doesn't matter if you think I'm out of, your, out of my mind. <laughs> And just go down on State Street. There's some people that are out of their mind on State Street. I mean, yeah. and we'll just fit right in. Being <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy yeah. for Jesus. Why? Because we have a hope and our future is secure. And so no matter what I say, no matter what they do, or no matter what they think, I mean, we're in America, we're in Madison, but what they think about us, maybe it's not the worst that we'll get here, right? Right. And say, man, all for Jesus. Verse 16, 
through 18. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, and, and, and sorry, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So when I celebrate in Christ, this newness of life, this hope eternal, this never-ending worship, amazingness, celebration of God, it's all from God. And when I look around, man, I have names. You guys have names? Are the names of people around you that you like, oh, I can't wait till they come. Man, I'm like, I can't wait till Lewis is new. Like where all of, all of his desires, all of his life is wrapped up in you. I can't wait. You've got the same life that you've given me, the same joy, the same way I can wake up every morning and say, yes, another day. And I, I can't wait till Lewis is new in him. And if this is true for me, if this is true for you, he can do it in them. He can do it in our neighbor, in our co-worker, in our extended family. He can do it. Make all things new. All this is from God, who Himself is doing the ministry of reconciliation, who Himself is helping the world draw people to Himself. So sometimes, you know, just a little encouragement. I, I, I tell you guys, I, I enjoy doing this. Man, it's, it's fun to, to go and evangelize, or I can use that word, to go and tell other people about Jesus, because I'm not doing the work on my own. It's actually God who is doing it himself, reconciling the work. And, and really what we're doing here is just joining in what he's already doing. That's right. So if, if we can, if I can, I was going to say we, make it really, if I can get over myself and just join in what God is doing, and he's already doing it. He, he's doing the work. All this is from God. Let's read the rest of this. Verse 18. So all this is from God. All of this heaven, all of this goodness, all of this glory, all of this future is from God. Verse, uh, uh, the second part of verse 18. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And so God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. See, if we connect the reality of heaven to the reality of hell, we are given this ministry of reconciliation. It gives us something to do. It gives us something to live for. It gives us something to aim for. Man, when we say, I want to live for God's glory, abandon, this is what we're talking about. the truth of who God is and of all the world. We can't rejoice in what we have in Christ without recognizing what others have without Christ. We can't. We, I, I can't just stop the series last week. I was like, I, I can't do that. We have to recognize that if what we have causes rejoicing, then what they go without will cause mourning. Paul didn't lose heart because his hope was in the eternal glory that he had in Jesus. He said, I can keep on going. Man, I, I, one more person called me crazy. It's okay. Uh, one more person beats me. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I have a hope. I have a future. It's secure in Jesus. And this this, the purpose of us having this conversation about heaven is to free us to live for God's glory alone. And this includes sharing Jesus with others. 
And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in Ephesians chapter 5, right? So I know that my, my goal this morning is not just to, to prompt you. And, and my goal also, if I follow Ephesians chapter 5, right, as a, as a pastor, as an evangelist, it isn't just to go do all the work like I'm not here. It's actually to equip you guys to go out, to, to believe fully on Jesus, and to equip you to go. So I have been working on some equipping tools. So i got a whole box of them here, actually. So we're gonna we're gonna get some of these today as we go out, um, and, and so that you guys can be equipped. You know, sometimes it's intimidating, right? Uh, I, I've confessed that already, right? I, I still get intimidated every time I'm like intentional going to go talk to a stranger about Jesus. Like they're still uneasy, man. Sometimes it can even start with people we already know, so it's not a stranger, like my neighbor, right, or your neighbor, or your coworker. But I got, I got a box of these. These are the little cards I made. And this is for, this is, this is what this is for. I'm going to make another card that's going to be here next week. The next card is just an invite, invite card. You can just be like, pass it to anybody. Here. And, and if you don't have courage to tell them about Jesus, hey, they can here on Sunday morning, they can hear about Jesus. But it's just an invite card. You're coming to Capital City Church. Here you go. This card here is a, is a card that, man, you, you've been having a conversation about Jesus with somebody. And it's a little bit more Jesus, Jesus filled, right? It's like, man, come discover new life, come discover purpose, come. And so you've already had a conversation with them about Jesus. It's already, you've already prompted their hearts, been prompted. You, you, you've sensed that, hey, the Holy Spirit's kind of like speaking to them too. Man, grab one of the, you have some of these cards in your hand, man. Meet Kurt and Dad, and I think Kevin's had a few of these in his in his pocket, you know. And man, it's perfect. Have a conversation. Here's how you can end it. Hey, man, come hear more about. Life in Jesus. Come hear more about discovering who God is. Come, you know, boom. This is this part. I want to give it to you guys today. But all of this hinges on us knowing the reality of our future. Andrew, how do you how do you go out? Kurt, how do you go out? Pastor, how do you just talk to anybody? How, man, we just we just know Jesus is. The only way, like we, we really believe it. When we sing it, we weren't just singing it this morning. We're like believing, yes, Jesus, you got everything in the future. It's all in order. It's all for you. So I can go out and be abandoned. Man, they can call me a fool. I don't care. I'm still not there. I'm still not 100% there yet. That's true. Let's go. The challenge this morning is to answer this question that I hope is burning inside of you. Am I willing to live unabandonedly for God's glory? For His sake? For His kingdom? For heaven? For the future? To do anything because I know that I have a hope and security in heaven. That's the question. That's what we live with. Am I willing? Am I ready? Live unabandoned for him. Because I know my future is secure. It will affect the way I think about my daily life. It's going to affect the way I plan things. It's going to affect the way I talk to people. It's going to affect the way I, I lead my family. It's going to affect everything, every decision I make. When I say, yeah, my future is secure. I got me. Jesus has everything for me. This morning, I want to pray with you and I thought, man, there's tons of different ways that we could end the day, you know, like super response time. Everybody's at the altar. We could have, you know, everybody stand. And I was thinking about that. You know, I could go around and pass two cards out to everybody. You know, I could, I could do that. Uh, there's a song that I love to sing, um, but I'm not a great musician. Um, so I want to have that playing. And after I pray, it's going to play. And I want to encourage you to take a moment and, and meditate on that question. Am I ready? Can I, will I live for your glory? Like, will I have my eyes so set on heaven that it affects everything I do and every plan that I make? That's a, that's, a, that's a hard, that's a heavy one this morning, right? Man, I believe wholeheartedly. We believe fully on the truth that our future is secure in Jesus. 
it changes everything we do. Amen. Well, let me pray over you this morning. And after I pray, man, you can take time to sit and meditate. You can be at the altar and, and come forward and pray. Or if you need to leave, that's that's a pro it's appropriate time to leave also. But let's take a moment and just say yes. Yes, God, for your glory. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. God, I thank you for this uh, series that you led us through uh, about what we have in you, Jesus. That our future is secure in you. God, that we do have a hope. God, that there is a new life coming. There is a time where all pain will dissipate. Father, Lord, right now as we live in the body, God, I pray that you would make us and mold us into those that live completely for you. God, it would affect what we do, it would affect what we plan. Father, even on this morning's topic, God, it would affect how we witness, how we share you with others. Because we know, God, if there's something to celebrate about heaven for those who are in Christ Jesus, there's something to mourn about those who do not have you. Father, help us be a part of a solution, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This morning, I, I want to encourage you guys to take a moment. Meditate on God. As the song plays, if you, want, if you feel prompted to respond in any way, to do that. I want to be down here, and if you say, Pastor, I would love for you to, to pray with me, to agree with me. Um, I, I have some pain in my body. We can talk about that. If, if, I, if you have something that's difficult heading a, ahead of you, I want to agree that Christ will come through for you in every area of your life. Let's spend a moment in prayer before we head out today.